And I, today, actually, I want to uh, start off by uh, issuing, issuing my first statement ever. Um, in light of this being Thanksgiving week, um, I just kind of want to share what I'm thankful for. Um, this time last year, I was going to the hospital to uh, welcome uh, my, my, mine and Abby and my wife's first baby girl to the world. And, um, and that was very, very special, very thankful for that. Um, but talking about that, you know, last night, game planning, uh, working our tails off like we normally do, uh, come into my office and I see a, uh, a pink bag um, in my, on my desk. And I, I didn't know what it was. What it was. I mean, obviously, uh, I figured it was for Charlie's first birthday and um, took it home. Charlie was still awake, thankfully, and was able to open it up with her. And the um, reason I'm saying this is because I'm just really thankful to be on a great team and uh, around some good, good young men, some great players. The guy I want to talk about, it's not a guy I coach every day. It's a guy that you guys know. Um, you see him. You see how, how he works. You see his, his play on the field. Um, but when I open this, I still don't know who this is, um, but this is what I got. And it was a birthday present to Charlie uh, from Blakely. And um, Blakely is Justin Lawler's little girl. And um, it was a really special deal, something that, you know, I haven't, I haven't ever ex uh, experienced in my life, but it was really, really cool. And um, I just felt like I wanted to share that today as I opened up our press conference um, and talk about a guy that, is a heck of a leader on the field, um, but he also impacts my life as well. And in the card, he said, "You know, from a father to a father, you know, I just wanted to wish your uh, baby girl a happy birthday." And that means a lot. And I know he's here, man, and I love you, man. I appreciate that so much. But um, <laughs> this goes far more, far beyond football, man. And uh, that's something really, really special that uh, I know uh, Lawler gets a lot of credit for what he does on the field, but to impact me the way he does, this is going to be a, um, <clears throat> a very, very emotional uh, Saturday for us as coaches, us as players, for these guys that have bought in and given us everything they, they got. Um, it's, it's really, really special, and it's – really touched my life, really touched my heart, and I felt like I wanted to share that today. So thank you to Justin and Denver and, and Blakely for the well wishes to uh, to Charlie and, and happy birthday wishes. So thanks so much. With that, I'll open up with questions. Back to football. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, we just felt like <clears throat> the week before, um, looking at the rep count with uh, Braden, you know, he didn't get to play a whole lot. Um, we've been, you know, we, we set it back in the spring. We try to get our top six players, playmakers. Uh, we all, as coaches, listened those guys out. And three of those guys were our running backs. I think I've mentioned that before. And so to see Braden not get as many reps and as uh, many um, – plays in that Navy game as we would have liked to have seen. We had to try to do something to try to get our guys on the field. And uh, and also, Memphis hadn't seen that. It was something that um, that we felt like, you know, with them having a bye week uh, to get ready for us, we had to throw a couple wrinkles out that they weren't going to be used to. If anything, just to get them on the sideline and get them, get them thinking um, about certain things. Um, and, and we also did a couple of different things with some tackle over stuff. And, 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 you know, we sold out to it last week, really repped it a lot in practice. Uh, we tried to show them the looks, the, our kids, the looks that we thought we'd get in the game. And, um, you know, we knew that sometimes we'd probably get a couple looks that were a little different. That's what you do when you got tackle over stuff. It just creates a whole lot of uh, uh, conflict on the defense. So. Um, we just tried to felt like we had to do something different uh, so that they haven't seen. And we were able to rush the ball in that set for over 230 yards just in that one um, set. So I think it worked out pretty good for us. I'm glad we invested the time in it. Is it something you can see the players over and over again? Or is it just a specific match? 
You know, I think um, a lot of any time you can change personnel on a defensive coordinator and defensive coaches, I think it, it really uh, it really you know creates conflict. You got to try to either match it up personnel wise on them. Um, different run fits uh, also go along with that. So. You know, I could see us, you know, growing that. You know, I'm, I'm a tight end kind of guy. I love tight ends. I could see us, you know, you watch Monday Night Football and and Coach Gruden's talking about 13 personnel that, that Atlanta runs. I mean, I love that kind of stuff because, it, again, it just changes up things. And, and I definitely could see us doing some more different things with our personnel and using guys in different ways, ways and get them in different positions that uh, could help us be more successful. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very, yeah, very, very rewarding for Ray. Um, you know, his only catch last year was a touchdown at Arizona State, and um, for now, is I think his only catch now is a touchdown. Uh, this year, um, we've targeted him several times. You know, obviously haven't hadn't got him in this box score like you said, but uh, to see a guy that uh, was questionable whether he'd play or not um, after after the Navy game, he was kind of banged up, and to see him go up, make a heck of a play, um, was was very rewarding. To see a guy that's just worked his butt off for us, um, I think you saw if you really go back and watch um, after he catches that touchdown. Um, the guys, the other 10 guys on the field, how they celebrated. And I think you see what uh, Raymond means to our team and, and the kind of impact he's made since he's been here in a short amount of time. Um, but very rewarding. Trey did a heck of a job slowing down, kind of creating some interference to get him, get him that step, get him open. Again, that's just what Trey does. He's very savvy, understands the game. Um, and, and Ray was able to get a step, been through a good ball and, and windy conditions, and, and Ray went up and caught it. Uh, and even landed on that that sore spot. So um, it was very rewarding and, and glad that uh, Raymond was able to catch a touchdown here for sure. You know they're they're um, they're long. They're athletic. Uh, they play extremely hard. They're scrappy guys. Um, they're not they're not scared. They play man coverage, um, and they're they're not afraid of whoever they're playing to play that man coverage. Uh, they do what they do, and, and they do it well. Uh, I think they're really, you know, they're really, really good at depending the pass, um, and and so we've got to do a good job of trying to create certain things in the pass game to get our guys open, and um, they try to they try to stop the run. So it's going to be a big challenge for us from a running back standpoint, tight ends and O line standpoint to uh, make some holes in the run game, and then uh, pick our chances in the pass game uh, when we get when we get certain matchups. Oh man, you know I could go on and on about a lot of our guys, like I did with Lawler um, earlier. But you know, Cortland's a guy that, you know, on and off the field, he's just a great kid. I've said it to numerous pro scouts that he's a guy that you would want your daughter to marry. Um, he's just unbelievable how he carries himself, um, the impact he makes on our guys on a day-to-day -day basis. His leadership has really grown over the, these three years that we've been together. You've really seen him develop into more of a vocal leader. Um, and he's just – his his value to this program, in my opinion, is priceless. Um, he'll go down as one of the all-time greats in this program. And, um, and, you know, I know this year it's been a little different for him. Uh, I know he's caught a lot more balls and had a lot more yards and a lot more touchdowns and all that kind of stuff. But – um, I think he understands that this thing is about winning, and uh, there's not one more guy in our locker room that wants to win just as much as Cortland does. And uh, he's going to do everything and anything he can to help us win day in, day out. He's never complained. He's never um, um, got mad at, at me or, or any of our coaches for not getting him the ball or the touches he wants or the target he needs or, or whatever. That's never been a, his, his deal. And uh, like I said, he's just a great, great kid. He's a great role model for young kids. Um, and again, he's a guy that you would want your daughter to marry and, and just be around every day because he's going to bring the best out of people. And with whoever, who, with whoever, whoever he's around, sorry, excuse me, um, he's going he's gonna to bring the best out of everybody. So um, we're going to miss him, that's for sure. Um, but I'm, I'm thankful that I've been able to be a part of his career and, and be a part of his life. And um, and we'll wish him well and cheer him on next level. Uh, 
Well, I think that that decision is pretty easy for, for him um, to make. I think the pro scouts are going to make it easy on him. Um, you know, I think it was – I think if he came out last year, he would have, you know, obviously got drafted high. Um, and so this year, it's just a no-brainer. It's kind of like a DeAndre Hopkins at Clemson, um, a guy that, you know, you understand that it's time to go, man. It's time to go. Uh, there's nothing else you can do uh, to make more money. <laughs> you're going to be as high as draft pick as they come. If if um, if you're not, then shame on the pro scouts that that missed on you. Um, but he's a guy that will go high. Um, there's nothing else he can do to 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 increase his draft stock, in my opinion. Uh, would love to have him back. Don't get me wrong. Um, but it's time for him to go and. You know, like we like we say in recruiting all the time, if you're that guy that's that's a first round pick your junior year, we'll drive you to the airport because you need to go. Um, and if you're not, we'll 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 be, be honest with you, we'll be truthful to you, and we'll tell you you need to come back and get better and work on things. And that's not the case with Cortland. We're going to drive Cortland to the airport and uh, and help him get on his way to to bigger and better things. And and I know he's very uh, appreciative of everything he's got from this university. Um, I know he's very appreciative of his teammates, uh, of all the, all the other coaches. I know he's very um, appreciative of everything this that SMU has done for him. And, um, and we'll always welcome him back here. All right, thanks guys. Love you, boy.